Say, man, got any caramel? <laughs> Be a lot cooler if you did. Oh, hey there. Halloween candy is great, but ever since the candy poisoning hysteria of the 1980s, handmade treats like caramel apples and caramel corn have fallen by the wayside. But with the canceling of trick-or-treating in many areas of the U.S. these days, I think it's safe to bring these treats back for our own enjoyment. We may even learn a thing or two about the origins of the main ingredients in caramel. Sugar. I'm Chase W. Beck. I have a PhD in anthropology. I'm a paleoethnobotanist, which means I study plant remains from archaeological sites. When I'm not in the lab studying botanical artifacts or the diets of prehistoric humans, my love of plants draws me to the kitchen. I love to share my favorite recipes with my friends, and today I'm sharing them with you on Dr. Beck's Epicurean Delights. Today we'll be making caramel popcorn. This recipe comes from Lara Vitale Sea Salt Caramel Corn. The first thing you need is popcorn kernels. And then to pop the popcorn kernels, you're going to need some vegetable oil. The link for Laura's recipe is in the show description. I am doing my own variation. To make the caramel, you will need some brown sugar, some butter, unsalted butter, some baking soda, some light corn syrup, some vanilla extract, and some sea salt. However, I'm going to make it a little bit different and add some fish sauce. So the instructions are to heat the oil in a deep pot with a lid on a stove top over medium high heat, adding one to three kernels when they pop. The oil has reached a proper temperature and you can add the rest of the kernels. Move the kernels around in the pot so that they're all coated with the oil and allow them to cook until they begin popping, uh, agitating the pot once they begin popping so that the unpopped kernels fall to the bottom, become heated, and pop. Once the popping slows, remove the entire thing from the heat and place the popped corn in a large heat-proof bowl. Then you'll combine the brown sugar, butter, corn syrup, and salt in a medium pot, omitting the salt if you are going to use fish sauce, like me. Uh, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 degrees Celsius, or 366 Kelvin, and begin heating the pot of caramel mixture on the stove over medium heat until the butter melts and the mixture combines. And then you can remove that pot from the heat, add your baking soda, and stir. If you're adding vanilla extract, you can add it now, or your fish sauce here, stirring them to combine. Once combined, pour this over the popcorn mixture, and then mix up the mixture with a, with a spatula. Then you line one to two baking sheets with silicone mats and you spread the corn mixture out on it and place those into the oven uh, for an hour, stirring every 20 minutes. Here I am popping the popcorn. Looks like it's just about ready. Here I am getting the caramel ready. Uh, one of these is going to be uh, the regular recipe and the other is going to be the fish sauce recipe so that I can compare the flavor of both of them. It's sitting in the bowls waiting to be coated with the caramel. You could pop the popcorn up to a day in advance if you wanted to, but uh, don't pop it too far in advance because it can become stale as it sits out.
and in no time at all, our caramel sauces should be ready for coating on the popcorn. All we need to do is get them to a boiling state because a lot of the cooking is going to occur in the oven once the popcorn's been coated. We're just trying to get the solution, the, the caramel mixture to come together a little bit, meld the flavor, melt the sugar. Anthropology alert. Kelly wrote that sugar in the form of molasses and rum played a major part in the Atlantic slave trade in the 15th to 19th centuries. Many newly established sugarcane plantations in the Caribbean relied upon slaves for the back-breaking work required to plant and harvest the fields. Panoram, Rogers, and Stoddard observe that this is an integral aspect of Afro-Caribbean history that Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean series has almost completely failed to address. Although, in defense of that series, battling sea monsters, outsmarting the East India Trading Company, and reversing ancient Aztec curses are far more entertaining topics to explore. So here I am coating the popcorn with the caramel sauce that I've made. Uh, the fish sauce at this point uh, can be uh, very fragrant, uh, very odorous. Uh, however, the flavor uh, on the finished finish project is not nearly as strong as how strongly it smells at this moment. It sort of mellows out as it, uh, as it bakes and cooks. I also found that um, using bowls to coat the popcorn is a lot easier than trying to coat the popcorn on a flat surface because the bowls sort of keep all the popcorn clumped together uh, making it easier to stir and mix in the caramel sauce. Whereas if you have it on a flat surface, it can be difficult to get really good um, coating on all the popcorn. Now that we've coated the popcorn with the caramel sauce, it's time to bake them in the oven for about an hour, stirring them every 20 minutes or so. So just like that, all of our caramel corn is ready uh, to eat. You might want to cool it off a little bit or else you'll burn your mouth, but we have stirred them up, baked them in the oven, and it's ready to go. Now it's time for the apples. So 
So I'm going to be making caramel apples two ways. One with uh, a caramel sauce made with corn syrup, the other with a caramel sauce made without corn syrup. And then I'm going to be testing various characteristics of the apples, whether or not they need to be washed first, whether or not they, uh, the caramel sauce adheres better if they're room temperature or they're cold. Uh, you can see the, the ingredients that you're going to need. Uh, for the with corn syrup, you're going to want corn syrup, brown sugar, vanilla extract, butter, uh, unsalted butter, kosher salt and heavy whipping cream. If you're making the recipe without the corn syrup, you're going to want kosher salt, heavy whipping cream, water, and granulated sugar. Um, the recipe with corn syrup comes from Sally's Baking Addiction. Addiction. The uh, link is in the uh, description, and the recipe without corn syrup comes from Serious Eats. And then also you're going to want eight apples and eight sturdy sticks in order to be able to coat them. All right, so here's the deal. This is the instructions to make caramel apples with corn syrup and caramel apples without corn syrup. However, this episode is already very long, and it's just going to get longer, especially if I take the time to explain all of these directions. So what you need to do if you want to make caramel apples with corn syrup or caramel apples without corn syrup is pause right now, write this down, or take a picture to refer to later. So I'm preparing the pots for the two caramel corn sauces, one with corn syrup, one without corn syrup. The recipe for the non-corn syrup sauce is very basic. It doesn't have very many ingredients at all. In fact, what you're going to put on the stove top is just water, granulated sugar, and a little bit of salt. Once it heats up, you're going to add some whipping cream Botany Minute. According to Glenn L. James, who wrote in the edited volume Sugarcane Second Edition, Sugarcane Saccharum officinarum is native to Asia, specifically the India New Guinea region. It is likely that it was cultivated from wild cane, Saccharum robustum, over the course of many centuries. Humans in the region likely selected out the plants with the sweetest, softest, and thickest canes for breeding. Today, Saccharum officinarum has become so far removed from its ancient ancestor that it is totally dependent on humans for propagation. Science Corner. Refined sugar is composed primarily of sucrose, a disaccharide of glucose and fructose. However, when heat is applied, a series of chemical interactions begin to occur called caramelization. 
Golan and Kuner wrote in 2011 that during this process, heat initiates and accelerates a variety of reactions, resulting in the production of several hundred flavor compounds, not least of which is diacetyl, the compound responsible for the smell of butterscotch. So here you can see the non-corn syrup solution on the left and the corn syrup solution on the right. For the corn syrup caramel sauce, the instructions indicate that you're supposed to use a pastry brush to brush around the inside of the pot uh, a little bit of water as it's cooking. And I've been told that this helps prevent the formation of large sugar crystals as it cooks because large sugar crystals uh, you'll be able to detect on your tongue as sort of a, a rough or grainy a granular characteristic, and that's not what we want in caramel. I have not actually tried this though. As you can see, the corn syrup free caramel uh, sauce is caramelizing. The sugar itself is actually caramelizing while it's on the stove, and it's just about ready uh, for me to add the uh, heavy whipping cream. things are really starting to get going. The one with the corn syrup has a lot of extra ingredients in it that the non-corn syrup one doesn't have. Things like butter and vanilla and brown sugar and all these things are adding essentially that caramel flavor that we're developing right now with the non-corn syrup sauce. Uh, essentially, uh, the, the brown sugar and the vanilla is mimicking the effects that you're going to get by making the, cor the caramelization yourself on your own stovetop. Uh, so it, uh, caramelization has occurred uh, previously uh, and the ingredients that you're using uh, are, are sort of like pre-caramelized. So here you have all the variations of the apples that I'm going to be testing here, starting from the top left. Uh, we have the unwashed room temperature with corn syrup. Uh, moving to the right on the top, we have the unwashed room temperature without corn syrup, unwashed cold without corn syrup, and unwashed cold with corn syrup. On the bottom row, from the left to the right, we have clean room temperature with corn syrup, clean room temperature without corn syrup, clean cold without corn syrup and clean cold with corn syrup. So these are all the variations of the apples that we're going to be trying out. So now that the caramel is ready, I can be encoding each uh, apple. The one on the top is the non-corn syrup caramel. The video on the bottom is the corn syrup caramel. And as you'll see, I'm having a lot more difficulty getting the coating onto the non-corn syrup caramel. So the caramel without corn syrup is a lot more difficult to work with uh, as far as getting it to coat the apples themselves. Here you can see the results of my caramel coating of the candy apples. On the top you have all the corn syrup apples. They coated very well regardless of room temperature or whether or not they were washed. Uh, on the bottom you can see that it was a lot harder to get a coating on. The 
the one that I did first uh, was clean and room temperature and I got a pretty good coating on that and then the quality decreases from there. Um, I believe that the ones that were not washed, I had the most difficult time getting the caramel to attach. And as you can see that one right there on the right, you can see a gap between the apple and the caramel uh, indicating to me that that caramel is ready to fall right off. So there you have it, two Halloween treat classics. Uh, one with a variation on ingredients and the other with a little bit of a experimentation on the proper way to prepare it. Now let's talk about the apples first. Uh, the recipe with the corn syrup in it did get better coverage of the apples. However, the corn syrup caramel did continue to flow after the apples had been coated. And then also the flavor on the corn syrup caramel recipes was not nearly as good. However, I will say they adhered to the apples perfectly, regardless of the characteristics of the apple, regardless of whether they were room temperature or whether or not they had been washed. So that did not seem to be a factor at all on the corn syrup caramel sauce. On the caramel sauce without corn syrup, the uh, I had a lot, of, a lot more trouble getting good coverage. Uh, you seem to have a lot less time in getting the apples coated. As you can see, some of these are almost not coated at all. And I would say that uh, it was really difficult to get good adherence, um, even when the apples were washed and cold. So. Uh, uh, I would say maybe it was a little bit harder to get uh, the caramel to adhere to the apple when they were unwashed and when they were room temperature, but even when they, the conditions were perfect, I still had difficulty getting a really good coating on the apples themselves. One plus for the corn syrup free recipe is that it tastes much better than the corn syrup recipe. The, it tastes a lot more like caramel, however if you did not have the two to compare, you probably still enjoy the corn syrup caramel sauce. Um, and then also the corn syrup, the, the corn syrup free uh, sauce is not going anywhere. It's not flowing, it's not moving. Uh, and so with all that said, let's do a, a comparison uh, of meat, uh, a taste comparison of these two. I'm going to choose, let's go with the clean room temperature without corn syrup. It's right there. I have a little knife here to try to get it off the plate because it is sticking to that plate. When you serve these, you might want to put a little parchment paper down. Uh, and I'm going to move this tag here with me. Uh, and then we'll do the uh, clean. We'll do the. Let's do the clean room temperature with corn syrup. And you might actually see some of that flowing caramel sauce as I try to get this guy off here because he is stuck. Yeah, even the, even the stick comes out. It's, he's adhering better to the table or to the plate than he is to the stick that's been shoved into his inside. All right, so here we go. We'll try this. This is room temperature corn syrup coating. Mm. That's on there. That's not going anywhere. It's very good. I just need a couple minutes to chew that down. I can see why this is a this is a, a popular treat. The combination of corn or of a caramel sauce with apples is just a great flavor combination. They're both sweet, but they somehow complement each other perfectly. And now we'll do clean room temp without corn syrup. This is the one that I got the best coating on. I don't know if it's because I tried to coat it first. The caramel coating on that is very thick, almost too thick. Although I can still bite through it. That's great. That's fantastic. Now we have to do the cold 
the washed cold without corn syrup and the washed cold with corn syrup. Will I be able to get this guy off? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is washed cold with corn syrup. Very good coating on there. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. One, one of the worries that I had was that you would bite into the apple and the coating would come off of the whole apple and just hang there outside your mouth, which I feel is a lot greater chance of happening with the non-corn syrup caramel sauce. The clean, cold, without corn syrup, as you can see, I didn't get a very good coating on here because of the difficulty with working with that, that caramel sauce. One of the instructions says to apply the caramel sauce when the caramel sauce is exactly 212 degrees. And I did my very best. It might've been a couple of degrees off and this is what you get when it's a couple of degrees off. And I started thinking to myself, how am I going to get it to go on there at exactly 212 degrees? And as I was lying in bed last night, I thought to myself, well, what is exactly, how do you hold 212 degrees? Do you use a hot water bath? You know, do you use a sous vide set at 212 degrees? And then it dawned on me that water boils at 212 degrees. So all you would have to do is just put the caramel in a double boiler and that should hold it at pretty close to 212 degrees while you coat all the apples. So maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll, I'll do a revisit to this if there's enough interest. But let me take a bite of this washed cold without corn syrup. I gotta say, it's great. Don't let anybody fool you. This recipe is a great tasting recipe. It's just a little bit difficult to work with. It's just a little bit finicky getting that proper coating. So I think that's apples out of the way. Let's move on to the caramel corn. Now one of these is traditional caramel corn. And the other one, I put fish sauce in. And they are both, I have previously tasted them, and delicious. No complaints on either one. Baking them in the oven, after coating them, dried out the caramel coating so that it's crunchy and bright. The fish sauce one, the, the salty flavor lasts just a little bit longer. I would almost say it has more salt, but I did control for the sodium amounts between the salt that I used and the fish sauce. So they should have the same amount of sodium. One of these is sort of light and airy, and the flavor just disappears out of your mouth, leaving you wanting more. And the other is a little bit darker, more earthy, and the salt flavor just lingers on the tongue. And I think that's what the, the fish sauce provides. I was just wondering if there was sort of a, a benefit of flavor that you get from adding that savory element of the fish sauce with your caramel corn. That's it for this episode. I'll catch you next time on Dr. Beck's Epicurean delights. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. And if you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe.